Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I noticed a small group of IP addresses scanning the same set of a bit unusual odd vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities are odd because they're not your normal simple remote code execution vulnerabilities that we often see by botnets, but they're really more looking sort of for information leakage issues like exposed environment variables and configuration files. Well, turns out the scans all use the L9 Explore user agent. So I dug a little bit into that and turns out it's related to the Leakix platform. Leakix, according to the site, is sort of a bug bounty helper tool to help identify and notify sites leaking data. You may, of course, just block the user agent. We also offer a feed of Leakix associate IP addresses. But then again, why not just use that list of URLs they're scanning? for and double check that you are not exposing any data via these URLs. And researcher Derek uh, Abdine uncovered a critical and simple to exploit directory traversal vulnerability in Aris DSL and fiber routers. Aris is one of the larger manufacturer of uh, these uh, devices. They also make cable modems and it's not clear if they are affected as well. The root cause here is really the myhtpd uh, daemon. That's the web server that's installed on these devices. You may they also find Ares uh, devices being used by various ISPs and sort of pre-installed by them if you rented your uh, modem or router from your ISP and they're sometimes then also rebranded. The problem is pretty simple. Uh, the web server doesn't really properly deal with spaces. Typically, there isn't supposed to be a space in a URL. You're supposed to encode it as a plus or a percent 20. But well, what if an attacker does send a space? What apparently happens here is that you can access the URL, which is of the part before the space. And for access control, the part after space is being used. So you're just using a slash there. So you're basically just adding space slash to a URL. And now you can access any file, including files that contain credentials to then obtain admin access to the device. Some of those files are obfuscated, but the advisory also talks about how to sort of de-obfuscate them to actually get some clear text back. Now, next question, of course, is, is there a patch available? And sure there is. Uh, Derek did notify Ares back in April. In May, Ares did release a patch, but uh, now ISPs have to actually roll out the patch. Typically, if this is sort of your uh, modem, you're not able to patch a device yourself. The ISP has to push the firmware to you. And apparently uh, only two ISPs so far, I guess, or at least larger ISPs have rolled out the patch to the majority of their customers. And there are still a lot of unpatched devices out there. Treat everything that you don't control as hostile, and that includes any devices that your uh, ISP provides that you don't control and run your own router firewall or whatever, uh, then in addition uh, to that device, these devices also uh, deal with voice over IP. If you sort of get this more phone service from the same ISP, and those credentials are at risk too. So. At the very least, denial of service will still be possible, even if you isolate your network. And I would think many of you are familiar with GitHub. Well, after all, our honeypot is hosted on GitHub, and I hope many of you have installed it. And uh, if you are uh, familiar with GitHub, you may have even forked a repository. That's when you're basically creating a copy of the code to then make uh, changes to it and maybe even contribute back some of those changes to the original project. So overall, that's a good thing if people fork projects. But what apparently happened here is that someone, uh, some uh, group did fork 35,000 different repositories. Now, to identify a repository, you have the name of the repository, but then also the owner, the organization owning that repository. So now you have 
the name twice with different organization and of course that causes confusion in particular since whoever did this did add malicious code to the 35,000 forks of uh, these repositories. Luckily they added the same lines to every repository they forked so they probably had some kind of script to do that for them and github already went ahead to remove those repositories of course they could just do it again tomorrow using a different snippet of code be aware be careful when you are including code from github and then finally, a couple of miscellaneous patches, vulnerabilities uh, that you should be aware of. If you're using the PHP framework Laravel, it fixed a deserialization vulnerability that could be used for arbitrary code execution. And apparently a lot of users of Palo Alto uh, devices are running the devices using the default master key. And a new tool has been released to exploit this issue. It can actually lead uh, to code execution. There isn't a patch for it because it's really just a configuration change that you have to make that you should have probably applied when you installed the device so double check your device this particular problem if you're running the global protect vpn and then we got uh, more router updates a uh, tray tech released an updated firmware for its routers addressing an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability. Same is also true for Cisco, who released updates for some of its devices as well. In particular, some of these small business or small medium business uh, routers again. Well, uh, that's it for uh, today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.